tour of the HSMM Pi project. So HSMM is uh, an acronym that stands for High Speed Multimedia, uh, which is a, uh, a method of creating wireless mesh networks um, that are available to uh, amateur radio operators. Uh, so HSMM can operate at much higher power and uh, with larger antenna uh, setups than, than are available to unlicensed operators. Um, so there are other HSMM uh, platforms out there, but uh, I think this is the first one that's available for the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the reason for uh, using the Raspberry Pi is it's low cost and, and uh, it's an easily accessible and hackable uh, platform. So uh, this HSMM Pi is, a, uh, is based on the Raspbian um, uh, Debian uh, distribution um, that's available for Raspberry Pi. Um, so HSMM Pi includes a install script that installs all the necessary dependencies um, as well as a web application which is what you're looking at right now um, that allows you to administer and uh, configure the HSMM Pi mesh node. Um, so we'll start by uh, just taking a look at the GitHub page over here. So this is at uh, github.com slash Earl Grey slash HSMM dash Pi. Um, so there's an installation section which includes the steps uh, for installing and um, configuring the HSMM Pi node. Um, so the first steps you're probably familiar with if you've already got a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that is you, you download the Raspbian di uh, disk image you write it to your SD card and then uh, put it in the Pi, connect the Pi to a wired Ethernet port uh, for the purpose of downloading um, uh, Raspbian uh, packages uh, for additional software dependencies um, and also SSHing into the Pi if that's how you choose to access it. Uh, apply power to it, log into the Pi using the uh, Pi account. Uh, so the default password is, is uh, Raspberry. Um, which is just a Raspbian uh, thing. Um, so then once you're logged in, logged in uh, it's just a matter of cloning the HSMM Pi project from GitHub and then running the install script. Um, once that completes, it typically takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, once that completes, uh, you can then access the Pi using the, uh, the following URL. Um, so I'll switch over to the tab that shows how that works. Um, so that's going to be the IP address of your Raspberry Pi node slash HSMM dash Pi. Um, so it'll take you to the status page which is what we're looking at right now. So when uh, when you start up a node um, and it hasn't been configured you won't see any uh, wireless mesh nodes because it's not yet part of a mesh network um, and it hasn't been configured. So we'll go ahead and log in. So we'll click on the login link there. Here you can specify the uh, username and password. So username is going to be admin, password, the default password is change me. Okay. And uh, it's it's not the fastest uh, web interaction you'll you'll encounter, uh, but keep in mind that it's a PHP application that's running on the Raspberry Pi. But for what we need to accomplish here, it's perfectly fast and uh, doesn't consume too many resources. Um, so we'll go to admin, and so we just clicked on admin and then uh, selected the network settings. So within network settings, you can uh, configure the Wi Fi, wired, and mesh attributes of the network settings. So here you can specify the adapter name and you can specify the IP address of the uh, Wi-Fi adapter. So you're going to want to specify a IP address that's going to be unique throughout the mesh network. Um, so in this case we're operating in the uh, 10 dot uh, subnet which allows for a uh, ton of IP addresses. Um, so here I've specified 10.201.5.3 um, and then you'll have to specify the SSID of your wireless network and the channel. So the SSID and the channel are going to be the same for all the mesh nodes throughout the network. Um, so they're all communicating on the same wireless network and the same channel. Um, so then I'll click on wired. And here we can specify the name of the, 
the wired adapter, which is going to be ETH0, ETH0 uh, by default. Then uh, this is a very important setting, which is uh, how we choose to use the wired um, Ethernet interface. So I've currently got it configured for WAN, which um, implies that this is going to be a gateway mesh node. So this node will provide a, uh, a gateway function to um, mesh client, uh, internal mesh nodes. So if a mesh node that's on the, uh, on the network wants to access, um, maybe access the internet uh, through the wired interface on this particular mesh node, then it will do so through the, uh, through the wired interface. You, have, you just have to configure it as a, as a WAN port. Um, so you can specify how the, uh, the WAN port gets its IP address. Um, in this case, it's through DHCP. You can also specify a uh, primary and secondary DNS. Um, so in this case, I chose the, the Google uh, DNS servers. Um, the other method of using the wired interface is as an internal mesh node. Um, so that is, it uh, provides a, uh, um, a way of uh, having computers uh, You can have the uh, the Raspberry Pi run a DHCP server and issue IP addresses um, to uh, computers that it can access through the wired wired interface and allow them to access other mesh nodes as well as access uh, gateway mesh nodes. So in this case, the uh, the wired interface has an IP address of 172.27.2.1 and a uh, 255, 255.255, 255.255.0 net mask, and it's running a DHCP server. So if you were to connect the uh, Ethernet port of this Raspberry Pi node to a network switch or to another com uh, computer with an Ethernet cable that's, uh, that's a crossover cable, then this Raspberry Pi node would issue DHCP addresses to that computer or any other computers that are connected to the switch and it would um, provide an uplink to the uh, the wireless mesh network to those computers. Um, it would serve as their gateway. Um, so in this case I want to leave this this particular node as a uh, with the wired settings set to WAN I'm going to jump over here to mesh now. Uh, so here you can specify your amateur radio call sign. So HSMM is uh, it's available only to uh, licensed uh, amateur radio operators. Uh, so there's an assumption here that you've got a call sign. So I've I've currently got my call sign in there. So that's Kilo Kilo Six Delta Charlie India, and uh, so I'll leave that there. Um, the reason for having the call sign there is that the HSMM Pi. Um, node will announce its uh, presence using ping ICMP packets every 10 minutes um, just consistent with with what uh, amateur radio operators do when operating via phone or CW or any other data mode um, you have to announce your uh, call sign so that's what's going on here we've got uh, my call sign being announced um, every 10 minutes uh, then I also have to specify the node name. So here I've specified the node name as being a composition of my call sign plus a uh, unique number within the, the mesh network. So I might have KK6DCI-1, 2, 3, etc. Um, you can also have the, uh, the mesh node operate in a secure mode. So by checking this checkbox and specifying a key here, which is an eight character hex uh, string. Uh, you can ensure that the OLSRD daemon, the Open Link State Routing daemon, that's used to coordinate nodes within the mesh, only recognizes nodes that have this this uh, secure key. So you can put in any eight character hex string you want here uh, to restrict access to the mesh network to only your mesh nodes. Um, so within admin, we can also 
configure the uh, user settings so you can change the password, which I strongly recommend you do. Um, you could also back up your settings and you could also reboot the node. Um, so when you reboot the node, it's going to take typically about two minutes for it to reboot. Uh, during that time, it will be unavailable, of course. Uh, so I can go back to the status here. Here it's showing all the uh, neighboring mesh nodes. One of these nodes is actually an HSMM mesh node, which runs on the Linksys uh, WRT54G uh, wireless access point. So this kind of demonstrates that the uh, HSMM Pi project is compatible with HSMM mesh. Um, and then this other, other node here is a, uh, it's, an, it's another HSMM Pi node that I've got running. Uh, so they've all got strong link quality. Um, so I think that kind of sums it up. Um, I hope that you have a chance to uh, test out the HSMM Pi project and uh, be sure to uh, relay any feedback to me. This is Scott Kidder, KK6. DCI, out.